key honors. Who else? Quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. Two more touchdown passes in this game. He's been called Teddy Icewater. He's been called Teddy Ball Game. But now in the second day of 2013, you may be able to start calling him Teddy Heisman. Get the campaign rolling heading into next season. On a scale of how entertaining President Obama was when introducing the national champion Cardinals and honoring them in the East Room, let's just say it was a 10 out of 10. Today, very much a part of the championship season for UofL, if not even bigger than any game they played this season. It is a sporting event bigger than the World Cup, the World Series, and the World War II combined. Steve Andrus alongside of Eric Crawford here for the Kentucky Dodgeball Championships of Kentucky where the five rules were in place. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Estimates put the number of fake clubs at more than two million per year. To put that in perspective, if you took that many clubs and laid them end to end, it would be long enough to stretch from Beth Page Black in New York all the way to Pebble Beach in California and then go all the way back for the return trip, more than 5,000 miles. Heed the red flags or your game and wallet may suffer. Symphony Hall, the site of the enshrinement ceremonies for the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Victor Oladipo may have been on the cover of Sports Illustrated this week, but with one three-point shot, his first of the game from this spot with 14 seconds left. He showed the SI cover jinx apparently does not apply to him. This three-pointer sealed it for Indiana and sent the Hoosiers back to the Sweet 16. This was the sign Kentucky quarterback commit Drew Barker retweeted after the Mississippi State loss Thursday. Keep calm, the class of 14 is coming. Expecting to see maybe a little more small ball, Steve? Jeff Thompson, U of L starting pitcher, definitely said so. He said he wished the game was today with the conditions that are out here right now with the wind blowing in from the outfield. But regardless of what team is playing in this eight team College World Series field, we talked to players for both U of L and IU. You don't have any choice but to adjust to this ballpark. Complete game shutout, 136 pitches, 130 going into the ninth inning. Describe your own performance tonight. I mean, I thought it was it was uh, pretty good. Um, pretty one good. Of, one of my better performances all year. I'm not sure I've ever seen a ball hit a rim that many times and not go in, but it didn't. It set off euphoria here in the Chrysler Arena. Indiana celebrating its first outright Big Ten championship in 20 years. Jockey Rosie Napravnik added another first female line to her horse racing resume. This time at Keeneland, where Napravnik has become the first female to capture the leading rider title at the Lexington track. Not only had Kentucky lost to Florida 26 consecutive years, the longest losing streak in the nation, but the Wildcats hadn't even kept it close as of late. UK lost to the Gators by an average of 40 points over the past five years. The last time the Cats kept it a one possession game, 2007, when Florida won by eight. Seven nothing Florida in the first quarter, and the Cats and Mark Stoops pulling out all the stops. Fake field goal, Joe Mansoor, the kicker, 25 yard touchdown, running for his life for six. Mark Stoops jackpot on the early gamble, made it seven to seven, the sideline loving every second of it. It was short lived though. Second quarter, 14-7 Gators, Tyler Murphy starting in place of the injured Jeff Driscoll, read option, touchdown. 21-7 Florida, the Cats lose 24 to seven. Only points coming on the fake field goal, 27 straight years now without beating Florida.
Nine months after Louisville football was crowned Sugar Bowl champs, the Cardinals opened their most anticipated season in school history. No, the schedule is not daunting, but the talent is still undeniable, evidenced by U of L's highest preseason ranking. It is football season once again in the Ville. The ninth ranked cards hosting Ohio at a sold out Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. How about that? The stands were packed at kickoff and also defensive end Lorenzo Malden started four days after his moped accident that put him in the hospital overnight. First drive of the game, Bridgewater complete to Damian Copeland. 34 yard touchdown, less than four minutes in at seven nothing cards. Copeland six catches later in the first deja vu. Back to Copeland, 98 yards and two scores for Honey Mustard. They did review it, his foot was down, the score would stand 14 zip. Second quarter, Teddy just locked in from the word go today. Devontae Parker, of all the players to leave wide open, Devontae Parker, 27 yard score, four catches, 73 yards for Parker, it's 21 nothing. Under four to go in the half, Bridgewater wasn't done. His fourth touchdown pass, to the fall camp standout, Kai De La Cruz. He led all receivers with 116 yards, had two touchdowns of his own. It was 28-0 at the half. Third quarter, didn't see much of this guy in the first half, and then he just busts one. The former Auburn star, Michael Dyer, 46 yards. He had just four carries. That was his second, but he made it count. Still in the third, Bridgewater to Florida transfer Robert Clark, a 25-yarder. Teddy, 23 of 28, 355 yards. Five touchdowns to tie a career high. Oh, by the way, he did it in just three quarters. 49-7 the final. Tom Lane and Eric Crawford couldn't find anything wrong with this one, but Charlie Strong did. Julie Herman served as second in command to Louisville Athletic Director Tom Jurich before Rutgers hired her as AD May 15th. The position opened after a player abuse scandal cost the former AD and men's basketball coach their jobs. Today, Herman found herself on the back page of the New York Daily News for the wrong reasons. Details have surfaced about Herman's own past issues with accusations of player abuse. Jurich was quoted in the Star Ledger saying, I knew things didn't end well, but that happens with a lot of coaches. But I can't help wonder how it's another situation in college sports where it's not necessarily the controversy, but the cover up and how Herman handled this evasively from the get go. It is Friday night. Rivalries remain a century later. Welcome to First Down Friday. 